Welcome to today's watercolor and colored pencils tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how I painted my little watercolor study dilution. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can never ever miss a new art video from me again. Also, if you are serious about learning how to paint with watercolors and oils professionally, you should check out my huge collection of watercolor, color pencils and oil paintings lessons over on Patreon. This video as well is available as a one hour and 40 minutes long painting lesson for my $5 patrons. For more painting tutorials, head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash and select the five or $10 reward tier. You get access to over 50 painting videos. For $10 per month, you get exclusive access to my live stream and real time painting videos. For $15 or more, you get beautiful art surprises, fine art prints, original watercolor illustrations and much more. Don't miss out on improving your skills and learn new techniques. Okay, and now let's start. I began this portrait with an under drawing first. For that, I traced my reference photo onto my watercolor paper. If you want to practice proportions and drawing in general, instead of tracing the reference, I recommend doing a drawing on a separate sheet of paper. Then you can photocopy it and transfer it onto your watercolor paper. I use Fabriano hot pressed watercolor paper Grana Satina. Sometimes the extra white version and sometimes not. For this one I used the slightly yellower version of the paper, which I believe fits well with the subject. I taped the artwork down on every side because I intended to fill in the entire area and make a nice little study with background effects. To start my painting I dampened my entire painting surface with water. The brush I used is called Called squirrel, calligraphy or French brush and I will leave links to all the materials and where to purchase them in the description of the video for you. After I dampened the paper I mixed a couple of darker shades that would match to my reference photo. My model has dark hair so I choose indigo blue, purple and Venetian red to mix some dark shades of paint. With the tip of my brush I slightly touch the surface of the paper. The color will bleed into the damp areas and distort distribute beautifully on the paper. This way I get beautiful flowing effects. Between each effect I used my hair dryer to dry the painting. It is crucial to work in layers and not try to add more watercolor into an already damp area because it will immediately bleed out. If you know what you do, you can intentionally use this effect, like I just did with the hair. I dampened the entire area around the face before I added watercolor to it, so that the bleeding effect wouldn't touch the face. This way I could separate areas that require more details from areas that I plan to leave abstract. After the abstract areas had dried, I proceeded to work on her face and added a shade of red to her cheeks. I made sure to immediately blur the edges with a wet brush so that they didn't get the chance to dry with a hard watercolor edge. Then I filled in the irises, added dark layers of browns, greens and purples around the eyes and the eyelids and slowly built up the values until I reached more darker and deeper shadows. The thing with watercolors is that as long as the paint is wet it looks a lot darker than when it has dried. So every time I think I might have reached the darkest color of my drawing, it's actually not the case and I have to add more pigment. But since you can't really correct with this medium, it's important to only slowly and carefully build up layers to finally reach the right color value. Sometimes I know that a certain area will be pitch black and then I mix this color right away, like with some of the dark areas in the background of my last witch painting. But that's not always the case. It's helpful to work on both eyes simultaneously so that they remain approximately even. While I was working on the eyes, I also jumped to work on the nose. When certain parts of my painting need to dry, I don't always use the hairdryer. Instead, I just continue working on other parts of my painting. This way I can save time and I don't have to stop my process. For the lips, I mixed a peachy shade of cadmium red light, orange and quinacridone magenta, which is an unpronounceable pink tone. Or you can use brilliant purple, which is also a pink tone. Both are very similar to each other and I constantly confuse them. You basically need a pink tone for mixing lips 
lips, cheeks and other parts of the skin. When painting lips and they are slightly open like in this portrait, it is important to draw the dark line between the lips very light at first and check how dark it really is while slightly increasing its intensity. The same goes for nostrils. You can quickly ruin a face by drawing teeth or nostrils too dark. Also every feature of a portrait, no matter how dark it is or how harsh its edges seem to appear to our eyes, it always slightly blurs into its surrounding areas. Like the eyebrows for example. They are not just dark lines on top of the skin, in fact every eyebrow hair casts a shadow on the underlying skin, which results in a visual blur effect around the eyebrows. To come back to the lips, they as well slightly blend into their surrounding skin. I never draw a sharp outline around lips, because that would look unnatural. But to blur the edges of the lips, watercolor is too chaotic to get a predictable outcome, especially when the lips are so small like in this portrait. So I use a flesh tone polychromous color pencils and a primrose luminance color pencil for the desired effect. In order to draw or paint a naturalistic looking face, blurry edges are important. And there are gradations of blurriness as well. So keep studying your reference photo and try to render what you see accordingly. Speaking of rendering it accordingly, I decided to not draw this portrait study very photorealistic, like I did with my last eye studies for example. I liked how the blurry watercolor effects gave the artwork a surreal mood. So I kept the style more illustrative than photorealistic. For me that meant I didn't add more shadows to the portrait. Normally in order to match the exact color value of my reference, I add layers over layers and then in the end would draw variations of values in every little part of the face with color pencils. But because I liked how the study looked halfway through the process already, I only added a couple of those shadow layers on top of my color pencil layer in the end. For those shadow layers, I used again Venetian Red, which is my substitute for burnt sienna, and the leftover muddy grey colors I had on my palette. Skin tones and shadows oftentimes are just variations of grey, so I don't really need to mix new colors for them. I was very pleased with how the study came out in the end, and I'm always so stunned that sometimes my artwork looks nothing like I had planned in the beginning. It was a total surprise for me how the abstract effects influenced the mood and how they shaped the image and I just went with it. I probably couldn't recreate the exact painting again, even if my life depended on it. So this was really a nice experience for me and it reminded me again that I shouldn't stay so strictly with my plans when creating artworks. Instead I need to trust the chaotic effects of watercolors and random brush strokes more and leave them untouched when they look good already. I called my study Dilution and if you like to adopt her, you can find her in my online shop. I will leave you a link in the description of the video. Okay, that's it for today's little portrait painting lesson. And if you like to watch the full 1 hour and 40 minutes long version, support me on Patreon at the $5 we bought here. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye!